With the video game industry reaching new heights with every passing year, it has been an uphill battle meeting the demand with supply. What used to be branded as a form of entertainment, which is often nonsensical, has now become a career for many professionals across the globe thanks to this rise in esports culture. A small category of esports will be featured in the 2024 Olympics, much to the surprise of the general public who never saw video games to be anything more than a leisure activity. With so much capital being invested in this industry, the development of these games have their own career trajectory and are one of the most exciting prospective roles in the market today. Starting from coding at its base level to complex machine learning algorithm at its peak, video game development has a lot of potential for growth due to the variety of languages one can learn to be able to contribute. So hey everyone, this is Bayabab from Simply Learn and welcome to this video on the best programming language for gaming. Before we get started, let's understand the metrics behind the rise in esports culture. According to a Business Insider article, the esports industry is on track to be a $1.5 industry by 2023. This growth has been accentuated by the fact that a multitude of academic institutions now provide scholarships to those people looking to pursue a career in video games and represent their organization professionally. As you can see the infographic, the growth in advertising revenue during esports events have been growing at a rapid rate, from 143 million in 2018 to 226 million in 2020. Video games have found prominence in the daily household. It is said that 3 out of every 5 Americans have either a Sony PlayStation, an Xbox, or a personal computer built specifically for gaming. Such a high audience invites higher sales figures, which in turn generated industry topping revenues. You can see the rate of growth getting stabilized as we move into the 2020s, indicating an onset of esports culture normalization, which will most likely see it take one of the top revenue generating streams in the recreational sector. It's not just about the people though. Thanks to this new era of digital sales and easy access to gaming consoles, Reputed game developers like Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, and Bethesda have constantly managed to rack up high production budgets. In some of these game titles, the production cost is more than in some Hollywood movies, starting from hiring voice actors and animators to finding programmers and investing in marketing. This kind of splurge of cash has been made possible purely due to the consistent return of investment in games like GTA 5 and Destiny. Not every ambitious project will get enough praise in the industry, but companies pay good money to make sure they hit the right formula as often as they can, thus increasing the necessity of efficient game developers. With the right foundation and programming, one can take the first step to become a sought after name in the video gaming industry. Thankfully, this video is here to give you a primer on the right programming language to choose for your career. Let's have a look at what we are going to learn today. We first learn what is video game development, then move on to the top programming languages in the market to start coding games on. We also look at some of the honorable mentions when it comes to languages that just miss the cut, then have a demonstration on how we can create a game using Python. So let's understand about what game development is. Video game development is the art of creating a game right from its design, development, all the way to its release. It has various aspects throughout the development cycle. Artifact design, good user experience, balanced game mechanics, realistic animations and voice acting, a reliable network profile, among many other things. The highlights include the process of designing the look and behavior of games. All the menus to all the maps that are included in the game need to be designed by certain animators and graphic designers that work together as a team in certain sects of the game. We also have reliable artifact designing to the voice models which help in giving life to the game. While programming is not exactly compulsory to learn game development, it is essential in certain segments. For example, while designing the look and behavior of the games or the sound designs, programming is not as important. However, when depending on the behavioral aspect of some game engines, programming is a must. While many of these departments don't need programming, things like mechanics, 
input configuration and networking setup can all be programmed from a single guy to teams dispersed all around the globe depending on the scope of the project. To help reduce the load for certain developers, game engines have been created. They act as a set of pre-configured modules and mechanics to accelerate the process of game development. Engines also help in easy distribution among different platforms, thereby reducing the workload of the development team by a considerable amount. Engines like Unity, CryEngine and Unreal Engine have revolutionized the way games are developed today. And engines like these keep pushing the boundaries of what we can expect over a single framework. There isn't just a single department that manages the complete cycle of the game development. It is the joint effort. So let's see some of these individual teams. The input management team has a lot of responsibility in creating a responsive environment for the user to play in. This team programs the kind of input parameters to be used all the way to the game reacts to movements, actions and interactions. The animation and design team is supposed to be responsible for the first impression that people have when they see the game for the first time. Be it due to terrific graphics in the trailers or an immersive gameplay experience thanks to an open world, the design team holds a lot of weight in deciding which way the game should proceed. The sound production team handles all the voice acting and the game response in order to generate the best auditory output. Some video game titles have managed to capture the atmosphere in war much more accurately than some Hollywood movies. Apart from in-game production, a solid voice acting lineup helps build credibility into the story and the inverse of it leaves a sour taste in the mouth. That is irrespective of the great graphics or the responsive gameplay. Behavioral optimization teams handle the response of the games to user decisions. It can be simple condition-based programming or complex machine learning algorithms that learn the user's habits throughout the playing process to deliver a much more personalized and authentic gaming experience. Now that we understand the basics of programming in game development, let's see which languages are the most preferred when starting out with game development. The languages we are going to cover in this video are C Sharp, C++, Java, JavaScript, and Lua. C Sharp is one of the most widely used languages in the video game industry thanks to its unique XNA framework. XNA framework is a set of tools and runtime environments developed by Microsoft. Thanks to this framework, C Sharp is very popular when it comes to developing games for Windows operating systems and Xbox consoles. The famous Unity engine was written using C Sharp to encourage new people in taking up video game development as a career instead of running through heaps of codes as an amateur. C Sharp is used along with other languages such as C++ and Java to create a fully functional game platform ready for release. Some of the most famous titles to be written in C Hash are the popular multiplayer game Rust and the classic Stardew Valley. Speaking of C++, it is still the most basic language needed for game development even after decades of its arrival. It's very fast and compilation is surprisingly quick even for large projects with multiple modules being sideloaded. Since C++ has been in the industry for so long, it has found its way into almost every platform that can run games and is easy to run across different systems. The modular nature of C++ also helps in better management of memory and CPU resources, thereby improving the overall performance and user experience of the game. It was a major part of the development of game engines like Unreal Engine and Frostbite Engine, which are still being used extensively in today's industry as flagship development platforms. The most popular games written on C++ can be attributed to the Frostbite game FIFA series or the Unreal Engine game Hallmark, those are the Borderland game series. Java found its way onto the game development scene with the introduction of the mobile phone. Starting from the old Motorola phones to the thick Nokia handsets, Java has been prevalent since then and is a crucial part of development. Java gets compiled on a Java Virtual Machine or a JVM. This helps in decreasing the reliance on a machine specification and makes it much more scalable. Java also has a multi-threading feature 
that allows it to run multiple threads of a single CPU simultaneously. This earns a significant boost in productivity and performance. It may not be as instrumental in today's desktop caliber games, but mobile based applications still feature Java at some level in their code base. Some popular games that employ Java in their codes are RuneScape and the popular multiplayer game known as Minecraft. JavaScript on the other hand is a much more suited to games that run on the browser level. Since it is already used for website development, integrating gaming mechanics into the latest web technologies is easier. This is possible due to the vast amounts of libraries available for JavaScript and the huge support community that has been building it since the last decade. The well-known games in this JavaScript sector are Angry Birds and the game known as Bejeweled. Lua is a relatively quick and cross-platform scripting language used in game development. The language is very easy to learn thanks to its easy syntax and beginner-friendly language rules. A big bonus when it comes in developing Lua is the ability to modify game files. Many models take a lot of effort into adding extra content to a complete game as per the request of the community. According to a survey conducted by GameDev.net in 2003, Lua was found to be the most popular scripting language being used for game development. Lua finds its use in the development of popular games such as Roblox and Baldur's Gate. Apart from these languages, there are a few honorable mentions that I feel we should look into that got overlooked in the above list. We have all heard about Python. It can be used for both development and scripting purposes. The main advantage of using Python is its Pygame module that acts as a quick prototyping mechanism instead of running through a lot of machines for testing purposes. Unfortunately, the scope of game development in Python has a lower ceiling than the other languages we discussed before. The games which are written using Python are usually simple in both design and function while also being two-dimensional in gameplay. These factors prevent Python from being the single-use language of a highly acclaimed game title. It is used along with other languages like c -sharp and C++ to create a unified game catering to all the needs of the player. Python also finds use in training machine learning models to be used in video game development to create a much more personalized gaming experience as compared to the general development paradigms. Apart from Python, Kotlin has become a new language to go for as a replacement for Java-based platforms. It is mostly used for developing Android games. Thanks to this, Google's very own Android Studio allows using Kotlin to develop Android applications and games instead of Java. Some of the reasons people are jumping to Kotlin is because of the coding efficiency and much better memory management. Code length in Kotlin is much smaller than Java for the same output. While many people are starting to prefer Kotlin over Java for newer projects, the community and bug squashing support is still far from the heights of Java, so it is going to be a good while till we see Kotlin take over the mobile development scenario completely. Now that we get an idea of how unique each programming language is when it comes to game development, let's take a look at one example where you can understand how the games are created on a very small scale. I use Python for this demo and the application being run is the classic snake game. Let's jump in. I will be using the software PyCharm, which is a development environment for Python. We use this environment for coding the game functionality as well as testing it as a prototype. Before I proceed, I would like to make you aware that Python needs to be installed on the machine before start writing code, along with PyCharm or does any other software which can compile Python code. Now when we jump into the code, my first step is to import the libraries being used while developing the game. Python has a huge library of extensions that can be imported into its programs in order to gain certain functionality. In this case, I am importing three modules, namely Turtle, Time, and Random. Turtle is a pre-installed Python library that enables users to create pictures and shapes by providing them with a virtual canvas. The on-screen pen that you use for drawing is called the Turtle, and this is what gives the library its name. In short, the Python Turtle library helps new programmers get a feel for what programming with Python is like in a fun and interactive way. 
The time module is used to count the number of seconds elapsed since the epoch, while the random function can be used to generate random numbers in Python. We use a set of predetermined variables to be used along with the program. In our first segment, we create a window screen. This is done by using the turtle module. This helps in giving a background to the game on which we can turn up our controls and other graphical enhancements. In the second part, we create the head of the snake. This will be our control for the entire game and it will change the direction on which direction we want to go. The next part we design the food of the game. All of this can be done using the turtle module and in some parts the random module as well which helps to determine where the food will be appearing on the screen. The next part is assigning control variables. In the assigning control variables part we need to assign local variables and global variables to be used when we provide input while playing the game. All of these can be used using the turtle module and here we can assign the keys that are being used to assign the controls. We have given the W, S, A, D commands to go for the top, bottom, left and right commands respectively. After the commands are set, we need to focus on the main gameplay of the portal. The main gameplay will handle the score management, the way the size of the snake increases after eating the food and the way the game ends when the snake hits a barrier or its body itself. All this can be done in the final part which leads to the final output of the game. Let's take a look at the result. As you can see, we have initiated a proper full working Python game using a single page of code. This can be controlled using the WSD key as we mentioned, which are customizable and can be done in any format possible. It has other backgrounds, it has colors which can be changed and we also have a high score mechanism that gets updated if we lose or continue playing. Apart from the visuals, we can also have sound libraries imported into the game to make it more lifelike, albeit in a snake game that makes a less of an addition. So this is how we can use Python to get started on generic game development using just turtle and a few other modular functions. Hope you learned something interesting today. If you have any questions regarding the topic that we mentioned, feel free to post your questions in the comments sections and we will happy to get back to you. Thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.